Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord yet again. It is Wednesday. It is half. We made it through half of the week. I don't know about y'all, but I'm always excited when we get to half of the week because not a lot of people make it this far. Not a people. A lot of people make it to Saturday. So in every moment, you just got to be grateful and you got to be appreciative of what you know God has given us. We're gonna sing two songs for you this evening. We hope that you. Join in with us, you worship with us. Song says, I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. If you know the song, come on and sing with us. We're going to bring one big choir in this evening. Right here. I just want to, I just, just want to praise you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, forever. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and order, and honor, they all, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, blessing me. for blessing me. Come on, we can do that one more time. Say, I just want to praise you forever, forever, and ever. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and order, and order, they all, they all come on, they all belong to the king. To Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, we're gonna take it up one more time. I just wanna praise you. Forever, forever, and never, and never, and never, and ever. For all, for all you've done for me. Come on, let's make it personal. Say blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And all. Just wanna praise just you. Wanna praise I wanna hear everybody in the building this evening. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for all for all you've done for me. For me. Come on, let's give God thanks this evening. Say blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And honor and honor. They all draw me nearer. I had to pause because I just got a moment where I used to think when my mom used to play the song in the car and I love my mom for it because half of the music that I, I know today I wouldn't know without my mom. If it wasn't for my mom's dedication in, in, in music and trying to serve God and trying to do right, I would not be able to be here and sing and minister and sing along with you this song. And I'm appreciative for my mom for this because the song always hit. Even when I was a small little boy, a little infant, up to now in my early 20s, I could always go back to the song, and the words will always just comfort me when I need comfort. The song says, draw me close to you, never let me go. I lay it all down again just to hear you say that I'm your friend. Does anybody want to be?
be able to call God their friend tonight? We, we already have the power, as Pastor Lee has been speaking for the past couple of weeks, that we already have the power. We just have to tap into it. Do you want to tap into the, the power that you have, that closeness of, 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 of God that you have? If that's your testimony, if you know the song, please, we invite you to sing with us. It's not a performance. This is, this is family worship. one time everybody in draw me close to you right here to draw me close
that's somebody's prayer this evening. Help me, Lord, you know, I know you need it. Help me know you are Even though you're far, I know that you're very distant. Even though it know, I know it feels far. I know that you're very, you're right here, Lord. And we just want you to know that you're near. We want to feel that you're near. We want to feel that you're near, God. for those who are here and those who are yet to come. We also pray for those who are looking online. So we ask your anointed blessings upon all of us. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's now time for our testimony time. Oh. I'm not sure if this is a testimony. Good evening, everyone. My heart is still broken after I attended the funeral yesterday. And when I saw that mother and the video where her son called her every morning at six o'clock and every night to put her to bed. I just want to admonish you to love in your children. I don't care where they are. I don't care what situation they're in. Reach out to them. Let them know you love them. We're in perilous times. Pastor preach from Sabbath after Sabbath to our young people that the call in is election sure. But it's not to our young people. We don't know when, we don't know where. That kid just went in the pool. He didn't expect to die. He went in to come back out. So as we come to church and we listen to the word, let's get our lines girded. Let's get our house in order. We don't know when, we don't know where. I don't understand it. I said, God, they prayed for him to come back to life, but you saw fit to take him home. Young, promising, medical doctor, student. All of them spoke about, oh, oh he was just amazing young man. But yet still, God had another plan for him. So I just want to admonish each one of us, wherever your children are, grandchildren, reach out to them. Let them know you love them. It doesn't matter where they've been, what they've been through, because we've been there too. Had not been for grace of God, where would we be? So let's lift up our children. Let's lift up family members. Family members, you have a beef with. Get over it. Parents, you have a beef with. Get over it. Because he that shall come will come, and he's not tarrying. Thank you so much for that testimony. Now tonight, I know that you're in the house of God and that he has done something for you this week. You know, I, I recall last week about the mother praying about her son that the car flipped over. I'm still praising God for that act of grace and mercy to him. So this evening, I wanna give you the opportunity to uplift his name that others can be drawn closer to him. So is it anyone tonight that wants to give a testimony? Here you are, sister. Good evening, church. Uh, everyone, those, everybody should know me, but my name is Veronica Leftridge, the other half of Ray Leftridge. And um, I just want y'all to know that uh, it's all in God's timing. 
So uh, I went to uh, New Jersey, uh, my husband and I, on a marriage retreat a couple weeks ago, and um, I said that um, I needed to buy something, you know, some lunch for my mom and my sister. I couldn't be in Pennsylvania, because the, the retreat was in Pennsylvania, and it'd be so close and not get them anything. And so we never know when our hearts are, we have giving hearts. And so uh, we decided to go to this restaurant. Uh, my mom likes soul food. And so we went and we, uh, I know the owner. I've kn I knew her when I was raised in um, New Jersey. And, but this particular time we had a special conversation. So she had asked me how my mom was doing. And I said, she's doing well, just pray for her. You know, her health is declining. And she said, you know, she did a wonderful job with your children, with you guys. And so I have four siblings, uh, well, there's four of us. And so she said, you know, despite her heart, uh, hardship, and, you know, when she said that, um, I, I gave my testimony, this was years ago, about um, how I came about. I'm a child of a rapist, and uh, my mom was raped at 14. And so, but, you know, God can turn tragedy into a blessing. And so, you know, so when she said she knew her hardship, you know, it sounded like, cause she said she went to school with her. So she, and so I don't know what told me to say, you know, yeah, you know, cause she was raped at 14. And she said, I know. And she named my father's name. Now I'm 62 and I have never met anybody on that side of the family. He's deceased now, but that almost blew me. I was trying to compose myself because I was in a restaurant. And so when she said that, she said, um, I said, you know, you know the Hines? My father's last name was Hines, H-I-N-E-S. And so she said, yes, my best friend is a Hines. And so when she said that, I'm like, what? Here I went. I thought I was going in to get some food for somebody. And Lord had something else in store for me. And so um, she said, yes. And I, and I just told her, I said, you know, I'm 62, I've never met inside of the family. She said, hold on. So she got her phone and she called her friend. And so I finally was able to talk to my cousin after 62, you know, 62 years. And so, but of course I wanted to meet her, but you know, the timing wasn't right. And so I knew I was coming back for my mom's birthday. And to add to that young lady that just came up, you know, I am trying to be more intentional, even though I'm here in Alabama, to spend more time with my mother, who is now 78. And so I just want you to know, I, re I scheduled a meeting with her this past Thursday. And she was going to meet me at the restaurant. And my sister came, and for the first time, I saw someone that I have never seen before on the other side of my father's family. And so I'm telling you guys now, one, don't take things to the grave, number one, okay? Um, because if it wasn't for the store owner finally able to say that, she didn't have to say that, right? And so it's important that people know their history. I just wanted to know some history. Um, so just pray for her. her. Her name is Joyce because she had a hard time coming to see me because it um, drew up some bad memories of what uh, she was 87 guys, 87, and she looked like she was 65. And so I just want to say this tonight to anybody that you know um, is looking for their biological family, you know, in God's timing, he will reveal it. Because I wasn't looking. I had stopped looking, actually. And just to know that you have to trust him in the process. And just, and just be honest with your family members. They need to know history, no matter how painful. So I told her I, was, I, I didn't want to open up wounds, but I wanted to heal some wounds. And so um, she just held my hand, and I, I have two siblings somewhere. She wasn't sure if she was gonna tell them about me, but I'm at peace knowing that I met her. And so continue to pray for my family as I pray for yours.
Thank you. Thank you. What an awesome testimony. Not being um, angry, but being loving and accepting and wanting to represent God in all situations. I praise God for such an awesome testimony this evening. Do we have one more? We have time for just one more. Come, come. Two more. I just wanted to give praise to God for the blessing of um, sparing my daughter. Um, I had said this testimony in my Sabbath school class that God gave me Pastor Double on my tire, on my daughter's tire. She, I had gotten that car when she was a junior in high school, and she had that original tire for eight years. And the blessing of it is... I delayed getting the tire, but the blessing of it is when it blew, it didn't blow when she was on the highway. Um, it caused a lot more damage to the car, but thank God that her life was spared and that everything worked out. So I'm thankful for God and his goodness, how he says that he will open up the windows and pour out blessings. And, you know, when you're faithful to him, he will definitely be faithful to you. Praise God for this testimony of how God still cares for us. And that was eight years on one time. Okay, we have just a little time, so here's your testimony. Just your pastor gave me one minute. Okay, one minute. One minute. Okay. I have a neighbor, and I grow a garden. He buys my food. He buys my grocery, and he gives it away. I have sold him over two or three hundred dollars worth of uh, turnip greens this 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 summer, uh, an altar. And yeah, I bought he, I bought I sold him some this evening, and uh, he gives it away. I went out to fifty three. This is my testimony. As a result of being faithful each and every week and each and every year, uh, a man gave me over two or three hundred dollars worth of lumber just just this week, and he has given me over a thousand dollars worth of lumber. And I have two trailers. I'm going to use that lumber to fix my trailers up. Uh, my minutes is up. You can't be God-given. You give and God will return unto you faithfully. This evening, as we continue in service, we want to go into prayer. You know, prayer is something that we all need, something that we all should be involved in. And I'm so thankful that God has given me the opportunity to help lead out in prayer for the church this coming year. So I want to ask if it's anyone that wants to come closer to the altar as we make our petitions known unto God, you're able to come at this time. We want to uplift ourselves to God in prayer, asking him to intercede for us in the throne room of God. Jesus, we're coming because we want to be faithful to you and we want you abiding in our hearts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening, we first ask for forgiveness of sin. We acknowledge, Lord, that we have not done everything perfectly and we want you to take us and make us new creatures in Christ Jesus our Lord. We want to be faithful, so we need God, the Holy Spirit, reigning in us, changing us, making us new creatures in Christ Jesus our Lord. We give you permission, Lord, to do with us what pleases you, because we are your creation. We are your idea. Lord, before we were born, when you placed us in our mother's womb, you mapped out what you wanted our lives to be. You didn't do a happen chance with us. You did Pacific with us. And we want to fulfill your desire in our lives. So please, cleanse us. Make us whole. And then, Lord, send us and use us for your glory and for your honor. 
tonight, Lord, hearts are heavy because of loved ones being laid to rest. I ask for you to, Lord, comfort them in their time of distress. Lord, it may be that some may need employment. Some may be sick, Lord, with diseases that they don't want to mention. I'm so glad that you're the great physician. If you raise the dead, I know you can heal the living. So we ask for you, Lord, to work in each one of our lives, no matter our situations, and give us healing that we can be about your business, seeking souls for the kingdom of God. And Lord, tonight, as the pastor stands before us, proclaiming this everlasting gospel, we ask that you would let it enter into us and keep us. We're depending upon you. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, Lord, it's nothing that we cannot do. So, Father, we just worship you. We praise you. We acknowledge you. And we're asking you to shine in us that others may want to know you too. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Listen, I'm so excited to see your smiling faces in the house of God tonight. So about a month ago, I met a sister that had come here, I believe, for the very first time. And uh, since that almost a month, almost a month, she's been here every single week in our Bible study. Come on, say amen tonight. She has been enjoying our Bible study. She's not a member of, of First Church. Uh, but she indeed loves the, the, the Lord. She loves the Word of God and the people of God. And I want y'all tonight to put your hands together and welcome my sister tonight as she comes forward to minister to us in a song tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Do we have any worshipers in the house? Amen. I appreciate this opportunity and, and this privilege to be here tonight, Pastor. I said to him, I came up on the grounds uh, quickly to take care of something with a friend of mine who is a member of you all's church, and he said, you need to come in. And I said, well, no, I'm, I'm going to my own, and, you know, and I thought, well, for him to invite me, because I didn't even know if he knew the Lord. No, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. I ain't gonna tell y'all who y'all's member is. But I thought about it and I said, well, if he invite me in, this must be good. And he knows that I love the word. And when I came in and I'm telling you y'all, I was about to burst before I left. And let me tell you why, because I was in a place with God at that moment where I was a personal place where I was saying, God, if you don't help me with this situation, I don't know if I'm going to be strong enough to conquer it. And so I was searching for something more. And so when I got the word from the pastor, I felt like a superwoman when I left. And Lord, if y'all getting that every day, every week, Come on, bless the man of God, because I was asking God to, get, to give me more. I needed a more, a higher dimension of, of him so I could handle what he was calling me for and so I could be obedient and, and study and do the things. And so I'm so grateful for, for this season of my life. And I'm going to keep coming because y'all ain't nobody, y'all been so nice to me. Y'all been so nice, y'all ain't asked me nothing, you know. So everybody's been like, I've been inviting people in, so I'm going to say this. But this song just says, your goodness is running after me. And it, uh, is anybody excited that God's goodness runs after them? Even when you don't, when you fail him, even when you fall down, even when you don't act right, even when you ain't no good, that his goodness just runs after you. Hallelujah. I 
I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause oh, Fall. See, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other See, I know you as a father I know you as a friend and I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, see all my life you have been faithful.
say it's your my life God has been yeah worship oh she all my life he has been so so good yes every breath that I give all I will sing I've got hallelujah come on put your hands together and open up your mouth you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, say amen again tonight put your hands together and give God praise if you be so kind tonight truly our God is good and he is so worthy to be praised all my life do I have a witness in the house tonight all my life he has been faithful all my life he has been good so so good come on somebody so so good would y'all help me thank God tonight for our singer on tonight? Would y'all help me praise God for her tonight? Is it Shawnee? Is it Sean? Sean? Amen. God bless you. I didn't want to mess it up earlier. <laughs> amen. To God be the glory. We are so grateful tonight to have you once again tonight with us. Your family. Amen. This is your family tonight. Amen. And for the weeks and months to come as well tonight. Amen. I want you to smile at somebody right now. Go on. Give somebody a quick smile tonight. Give somebody a quick smile. Give somebody a quick smile. Give God praise for our sound technicians tonight as well. Amen. They do an awesome job. Praise God for them tonight. Praise God. And I'm going I'm to put the, this, the QR code is on the screen. I want to get to the word of God tonight. There's a word tonight from the Lord. And I want to share this with you on tonight. We are almost wrapping up our series that we've been in dealing with, again, how to defeat the devil. Come on, say amen, somebody. You heard the testimony tonight. We already got power. Do I have a witness tonight? We got power in Jesus' name. That was a few y'all tonight. I'm looking for some witnesses tonight that knows that we got power in Jesus' name tonight. Oh, yes, we do. We've got power in the name of Jesus. He is victorious tonight. I'm going to invite you real quick to take that, get that QR code tonight. Grab that off of the screens. Those who are watching online, welcome once again. Uh, make sure that you screenshot that, grab that QR code. It gives you the entire study. So if you're new with us, it gives you the entire study. You can go back and review it, study it in your own spare time as well on tonight. For those who are here, we've given you handouts and all that as well. Let's bow our heads. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. God, you've been so, so, so good to us. God, all of our lives, we can testify, God, that there is none like you. So, God, we ask tonight as we open up now the pages of sacred scripture once again, God, we know that your word is God-breathed, is Holy Spirit-inspired. And I pray, oh God, tonight that you would indeed inspire us, that you would challenge us. I pray, God, tonight that victory would be ours in the name of Jesus. We declare it. And we believe it to be done, but because we've asked it in Jesus' name, let the church of God say amen and amen tonight. I'm going to jump right into it again on tonight. We have been, again, in our four-part series now, we have been looking at uh, strategies and tactics on how uh, Bible individuals gain the victory. 
We started off by looking at, of course, we began this study looking at how Jesus uh, was able to get victory over the devil. And let's do a quick review just really fast tonight because I have a lot to cover in a little bit of time tonight. What did Jesus do? Matthew chapter 4, he did what? What did Jesus do? Absolutely, he stood on the word of God because Jesus is the word. He told the devil, it is what everybody? It is what everybody? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? Word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we started to remind you all that it's not good enough just to know the word. You've got to walk out and live the word. Do I have a witness tonight? And we said that because the Bible says that the devil knows the word and the devil even trembles. So it's not good enough you just to know word. You've got to be obedient to the word because that's what the enemy will never do. He will never be obedient to the word of God. So what happens with us is that we got to walk that thing out. We also looked at uh, the apostle Paul, and there was a little slave girl that was following him, and he finally said, enough is enough. And he declared, he opened up his mouth, and he said, what, everybody? Lord Jesus, have mercy. I got one person that's been with me in Bible study tonight. Yeah, Acts chapter 16. Thank you so much tonight. Amen. He opened up his mouth and he said, in the name of Jesus. And when he'd be able to declare the name of Jesus, uh, because let me just pause for a second and make sure I'm in the right place tonight. Anybody know there's power in the name of Jesus Christ tonight? Yeah, there's power in that name. Paul was able to declare in the name of Jesus, and those demons began to flee. We saw on last week, and I'll, I'll, I'll start right here with my slides tonight, and that is again, if the cosmic curtain could be removed, if God were allowed for you to see a sneak preview on what is going on behind the scenes right now, you will all understand that God is fighting for you. Yep, I hope I'm in the right house tonight. Thank you so very much. I'll say it again tonight. Yeah, our God fights our battles. The stuff that you don't even know about, God has already taken care of. Yep, I'm, I'm going to work hard tonight because I need for y'all to get this tonight. I'll say it again. The things that you don't even know that was coming your way, God was fighting your battles in advance of some stuff that even you didn't even know about was coming your way. Why is that? Because God fights our battles. He's a fighter. Come on, somebody. Amen. He is a fighter. God will fight our battles. And tonight, I want to remind you as well tonight that God is always working. Somebody say working. Our God is never just standing still twiddling his thumbs. Our God is a God who is working on behalf of his children. If you can't see him, you can always trust him. If you cannot see what God is doing, you got to know that God is working things out for his glory and for our good. He's always at work. He is not sitting back pacing the floors in heaven trying to figure out what's going on on planet earth. No, our God knows what's going on. He will fight our battles and he will give us the victory. Do I have a witness tonight, somebody? I like that tonight. Well, let me just remind you for a second. So what happened on last week, we saw Daniel chapter 10. If you did not pick that up last week, you need to go back and to read Daniel chapter 10 again and watch the video from last week because it was powerful. How did Daniel defeat the devil? I'll tell you right now again. How did he do it? He began by seeking the Lord. Daniel began seeking the face of God. He began praying and what else, somebody? And fasting. And we all understand by now that the Bible declares that there are only some things that will happen when you pray. And if you want to see the hand of God move in your life, you got to learn how to pray and fast. If you want to see some strong holes broken, God help me tonight, you've got to pray and fast. If you want to see God be able to show up in your life, you got to turn down and turn up so that God will indeed know that you are serious about seeking him. Some things only happen by prayer and by fasting. And number two, we are assured that God shows up in the midst of our seeking him. In the midst of our calling up on his name, God knows how to show up. And number three and four, Jesus fought for Daniel and Jesus fights for us. 
Bible says that he was fasting and mourning for 21 days. Y'all remember that last week? For 21 days, he was crying out to God, and the angel came back and said, listen, brother, from the very first day that you began to pray, I heard your prayer. But he said that the prince of the king of Persia withheld me. In other words, there was cosmic conflict going on in the cosmos. So the Bible says that Michael showed up. I'm so glad you heard that, Elder Lampkin. Oh, yeah, I got a witness tonight. Michael showed up. And we all we so, taught you all last week again that Michael is the warrior name for Jesus. Michael, whenever Michael shows up, it's because he's about to do some battle. He's about to flex his muscles. He, he's about to show who is in control. That El, El, El means God. El, El Shaddai, uh, Elohim, all of those things. It's God. And then the Michael is who is like, who is like. So then Jesus shows up, handles the king of Persia, brings back the answer, says, brother, it's going to be all right because I'm fighting on your behalf as well. Now, I ended it last night, and I want to I pick up here tonight, and that is this. I said last week, and I hope they're all praying with me tonight, that you can't make it by yourself. Yep, you better hang out there for a little bit, Pastor Lee. Hang out there for a second. You, can, you are not a self-made woman. You are not a self-made man. Uh, you needed help to even get here on planet Earth. And if you're going to make it in these last days, it's not because you are so spiritual. It's because you got some people who are praying for you. Man, we need folk praying for us. We need folk for you praying for somebody else. And I'll say, and I know y'all get time to say this, y'all, but the only reason why we're here tonight is because somebody prayed for us. Do I have a witness in the house tonight? Somebody prayed for you. And you know that's the reason, because of the truth be told, you should have hit the wall a long time ago. But it was God who stepped in because of the prayers of somebody who was faithful. Amen. And I'll say this last thing. I believe that, I believe that the prayers of our grandparents, great-grandparents, I believe that God is still answering those prayers. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that God keeps those prayers, our tears in a bottle, not prayers are sent up to God. I believe he stores that, and at the right time, he releases it when he knows we need it the most. Come on, somebody say amen. So tonight, I'm going to look at for a few moments, I'm going to look at tonight the reality that we have victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Now, let me say this tonight. This is my thesis tonight, and I'll get out y'all way. I'll get out as fast as I can. I want to make sure you all understand the word tonight. Man's extremities are God's opportunities. Yep, yep, yep. Y'all didn't hear what I said, so I got to say it again tonight. Can I say it again? I can say it. I said man's extremities are God's opportunities. Okay, y'all know what that means. It, it means this tonight. It means that when everything on the natural cannot be done, that's when the supernatural steps in. Okay, can I say it again tonight? Uh, whenever you can't do it, God can do it. Whenever it seems to be extreme, God specializes in handling what you seem to call impossible. I need to make sure that y'all hear me tonight because I heard God in my study. If you have a health concern, God is able to heal. If you got a mind concern, God is able to heal. I, I, when, when I call yours out, if he's done it before, can you just shout amen tonight? If your money was ever funny and your change was ever strange, but God made a way. Do I have a witness, somebody? When you don't know which way to go, God shows up. Because what, uh, what our extremity is, is God's opportunity. So I don't shun then or run away from trials. Because the trial teaches me that it's only an opportunity for God to show up and to show out. Amen, somebody. All right, so let's look at a text tonight that will prove that tonight. Very familiar text, Mark chapter 5. Let's go there real fast. Mark chapter 5. And beginning now, verse number 1 right now, Mark chapter 5. 
I'm so excited tonight to share God's word. Mark chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 1 now. Here is what the word of the Lord says. You know this text. Some of you all know it. And I'm going to read it tonight for you. Mark chapter 5 beginning at verse number 1. When you have it, come on, say amen. amen. Bible says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadanese. And when he, that is Jesus, was come out of the ship, how fast? Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with a what everybody? An unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Have mercy. Can, can you see him right now? Because that he had often been bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broke into pieces. Neither could any man do what everybody tame him in always, 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 night and day. Day and night. He was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, if you don't read nothing else, you better read verse 6. The Bible says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and he said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Don't miss that. Verse 8, for he said, Jesus, he says to him, he, for he said unto him, the demons, come out of the man, thou what everybody? Unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he, that is the demons, besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. I got to slow it down again. The demons are beseeching and besought Jesus, saying, listen, Jesus, whatever you do, do not send us away. Now, verse 11, now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And the Bible says, how many of the devils? This is so interesting, y'all. And all the devils besought him, saying, this is what the devils are speaking right now. The, the devils are having a conversation. Are y'all getting this word tonight? The devil said, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And fourth way, Jesus gave them leave. Now, I, I got to pause right there because what you need to see right here is that Jesus gave the demons permission. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and there were about how many of them? 2,000. Have mercy, y'all. 2,000. And they were choked in the sea. Verse 14, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city, in the country, and they went out to see it what was done. And now verse number 15 says, don't miss verse 15. The Bible says, and they come to Jesus, and they see him that, don't miss the preposition, don't miss the, the verb, was possessed with the devil and had the legions. He's now sitting and clothed. And in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Verse 17, and they began, check out the juxtaposition, and they began to pray him, that is Jesus, to depart out of their coast. Jesus, you got to go. You messing things up. And the Bible says now, and when he that is now the ex-demon-possessed man was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil, he prayed that he might be with everybody, that he might be with him. Come on, can I stay with you? How be it? Jesus suffered him not. But he said unto him, go home. Go where? Oh, 
I can, I can shut down prayer meeting right here. He says, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and had compassion on thee. And he departed, the brother who's been saved, clothed, and in his right mind. Bible says he departed and began to King James. Or what's that word say, somebody? Oh, some of y'all can't read the word. Can y'all read that word now? He began to do what? Publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did what, everybody? All men did marvel. Who says amen to the word of God tonight? I read to you 20 scriptures. You don't read that much, but you need to catch that on tonight. Amen. You, you know this story. Most, most of us have read this story, looked at this thing time and time again. But I want to holler just for a few moments on tonight to prove again that whatever difficulty we have, God is able to meet that difficulty. And, and I guess what I really want you to understand tonight, y'all, is that this is not just theoretical. This is not just a preacher getting excited and talking about this. I'm telling you what I know. God is able to meet every single need you have. And it doesn't matter how bad it looks. It can look as if it is going down, but when Jesus shows up, he turns everything around. Look at the picture tonight. This picture of this man tonight, this man on the screen tonight, he is literally out of his mind. Uh, the cheers are blocking some of it on tonight, but he is out of, he is completely, can I go there tonight, y'all? Y'all grown. He's butt naked, amen. He's, he, he's out of his mind. And what I want you to see tonight is this. This is a picture of what a person looks like when they are apart from God. Now, now I, I, I know in your mind, I saw pause for a second, but I know in your mind you're saying, no, nah, Pastor, I didn't look that bad. No, nah, Pastor, I don't look that bad right now. And I want to argue with you tonight that it may not appear that you look that bad, but some of y'all are looking just like this man tonight. But whenever we are trying to do things in our own power, we're living a life apart from God. Whenever we think that I can do it in and of myself, you are living apart from God. Whenever you think that you're smart enough, I know I said a word right there to some educated folk, all of us tonight. When you think that it's all about you, that I can accomplish it, you are living a life of a demoniac. You are out of your mind. I want you to look at tonight. This, this is what it looks like to be outside of God's will, to look, what it looks like to be somebody living apart from God. He lives in the hill country among the dead. Now, now I, I pause there for a second because y'all know I love to break down the text. So what happens in this society right now is that literally everybody had given up on him. Nobody cares about this man because literally he's just like the ordinary show that you see down on Skid Row. He's the ordinary man that we bypass and I think that it's unique and, and it's a little ju a juxtaposition in what happens here in Huntsville. Let me slow it down and break it down. The street, what's the street over there? What's the street off of uh, Bob Wallace where our brothers and sisters hang out? The, our homeless brothers and sisters hang out. No, 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 my, the, the major strip, or the, the major, the major drag. Okay, y'all, well, we, we go and feed the homeless many. Where's the many, 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 thank you. What's it called? Derek. Derek Streets. Thank you so much. It's Derek. Now, some of y'all have no idea where Derek Street is because y'all ain't never been to Derek Street. Amen, because God's blessed you not to be over there. But Derek Street is such a juxtaposition of our text tonight because what happens on Derrick Street, it is literally one of the largest homeless camps in Huntsville. And, and what happens, when, and there are literally hundreds, hundreds of homeless individuals that are there in camp behind a little shelter there, trash cans laid all out. But across the street is a graveyard. It's a cemetery. And in my mind, coming into Huntsville and seeing Derrick Street, I'm wondering to myself, did the city, I'm calling them out tonight, 
Did the city strategically place the homeless camp across the street from a cemetery? I don't have the answer tonight, but the reality is, is that this man is looking just like somebody perhaps around Derrick Street. This man tonight is literally in close proximity to the graveyard because many people already have written him off and think that he's dead. And I, I, oh, don't, 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 get, don't get it too upset with me tonight because I want to I stay here for one second tonight because I want to tell you this tonight that it ain't over until God says it's over. I, I, you ought not give up on people who look dead. I wish y'all would help me tonight, somebody. Don't you ever give up on somebody just because they're looking like they're going through a rough time. You don't know how God can bring them out. Matter of fact, you can look in the mirror and you can say if it had not been for the way God blessed my life, Matter of fact, can I give y'all one more shout tonight? Let some of us miss three paychecks in a row, and we'll find ourselves looking like, are y'all going to help me preach tonight, somebody? If it had not been for the grace of God. So this man in our text, he's living in the hill country amongst the dead. His physical address is the graveyard. He's demon-possessed. And what's jacked up about him is that when you are apart from God, you then begin to do to yourself self-abusive uh, uh, behavior. You begin to just tear up yourself. So the Bible says he's always screaming. He's always cutting himself. He has violent antisocial behavior. Y'all hear me tonight. Mentally, he is out of his mind. He's lost and wild. He has superhuman strength like Samson. On steroids. Nobody can tame him. I felt my help. Nobody can do anything for this man. No man can help him at all. Ha. Ah. Isn't it crazy that that sometimes you can phone a friend, but a friend can't help you? Anybody ever been there before? Can I, can I, can I get, get, a, get one witness tonight? Anybody ever try somebody and no one can help you solve your problem? And then church folk will say, I'm praying for you, but we'll get to pray for you. Ain't nobody pray for you. This man is out of his mind, but the Bible says in verse 6, I love this conjunction, y'all. I just got to hang out and just shout myself tonight. When nobody else could handle him, when nobody else would study him, when nobody else wanted to have anything to do with him, the Bible says in verse 6, but when he saw, when he saw Jesus afar off, now, let me, let me slow it down because I get too excited. Let me slow it down. When he saw Jesus afar off, immediately in your mind, your mind should be going now to Luke chapter 15, where the prodigal son and the father, are y'all hearing me tonight? The, the son has been jacked up and messed up because he's been living apart from his father's house. But the father is standing at the door, and the opposite now, and when he sees his son, he comes running after his son. But in this text tonight, the Bible says that when the demon-possessed man saw Jesus, don't y'all sit there real quiet tonight. The Bible says he ran and worshipped him. Now, y'all already know where I'm going tonight because y'all already know I'm a little extra when it comes to worship, a little extra when it comes to God. And my thing is this, y'all. If a demon-possessed man has enough sense, he's, he's demon-possessed right now. He's out of his mind right now. He's crazy right now. He's stoned out of his mind right now. But if this man has enough sense to bow down and give God worship, how about us that's in our right mind? How about us that's seen God make a way. How about us that can testify he's been better to me than I can be to myself. He's more than enough. Bible says that when he sees Jesus, I want to think that there's something about Jesus. That when he sees him, and check out the text, y'all, I love this because he's not even close to him right now. Oh, y'all missed it. Okay, so in Matthew chapter, in Mark chapter 4, a storm was going on. 
and the storm was brewing and the question was man man who is this Jesus I mean what is he and now this is the answer to who he is when they see when he sees Jesus are far off so are y'all hearing this tonight he's not just close proximity he sees Jesus down the road and a down the road Jesus is just as good to him as a Jesus who's standing right here. See, I, 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 I see now, now most of us, we criticize him, but I want to celebrate him for a second, y'all, because when he sees Jesus, the Bible says he falls down and worships. Now, that sounds strange because now, now, let's move this text quickly now because he falls down and worships. The question is, who is really falling down to worship? Is it the man externally or is it the demons on the inside of him and this this ain't hard y'all this, this ain't hard y'all this ain't hard y'all y'all already know who it is right now it is the demons on the inside of the brother okay y'all I'm sorry I woke up like this again today if demons got enough sense to bow down I, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I know some of y'all, is he Adventist? I, I born and bred all day, all night to the day I die. But I refuse to come to church, fold my hands, put my leg over my, and talk about I'm going to wait for somebody to get me excited about the Lord. No, when I wake up in the morning, I'm glad to be alive another day. Shouldn't nobody have to push you and pump you to give God praise. It's the demons. Why? Because the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So the demons remember hanging out with Jesus in heaven as angels. They got kicked out. So when they see Jesus again, they say, uh oh, we already know the protocol. You better fall down and give him worship. Because we were in heaven already bowing down and saying, holy, holy, holy. And now that we're demons now, we still are subject to the name of Jesus Christ. So they got to fall down and worship. They fall down and begin to worship. Don't miss the text tonight. They fall down and begin to worship. And what's so amazing about this is, is that they begin to have a conversation. Now, I, I got to stop for a second, y'all, because I want to make sure you are very clear what I'm trying to teach tonight, and that is this. There is nothing too hard for God. Now, now some of y'all don't believe that, so I believe that life and death, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Would you please open your mouth and say, there's nothing too hard for God. Come on, say it. Nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for God. What you think is hard, God says, that's my normal. What you call a miracle is what I do every single day. Ain't nothing too hard for God. And some things we have not because we ask not. And some things God says, I brought you away because I'm simply trying to draw you to myself. I'm not trying to take you out. God says, I've allowed this to draw you to myself. There is nothing too hard for God. I want to put this quote on the screen tonight. Look at this because some of y'all don't believe me, so y'all believe selective messages perhaps. Here it is. She says this, though, you might want to screenshot this because this will bless your socks off. Here it is tonight. It says, when his people shall be in the greatest danger, seemingly unable to stand against the power of Satan, God will work in their behalf. Why? Because man's extremity is God's opportunity. Come on, say amen, somebody. What she's saying is, is that, listen, y'all, when it seems as if that you can't do it, and I know you've been there. I'm sorry to talk so loud tonight, but there are times, y'all, where you can't pray for yourself. I, I got no help in this place tonight. Have you ever been so depressed, ever been so jacked up in your head, your mind? Has, the, has your head ever been so heavy, your burden ever been so heavy that you couldn't even muster enough to pray? When you and yourself seem as if you can't get it done, oh, God will work on their behalf. 
He's interceding even right now for us. He's interceding right now on our behalf. Unless I keep you too long, the Bible says that, that he ran to Jesus. Now, here's what I want to argue tonight, bro. I sit down tonight, that if this brother and these demons have enough sense to run to Jesus, every single morning, every single noon, Every single evening before you lay yourself on your pillow and go to sleep and drool, you ought to be running to Jesus. That old Negro spirit who says, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Listen, y'all, I know that a lot of us, we have no great need. I know a lot of us, God has taken care of us. But can I be real tonight, y'all? You may live on top of the mountain right now, but there's a valley that has your name on it. I say it again. You may live on top of the mountain right now, but as sure enough as you're living, there is a valley with your name on it. Nobody lives on the mountain for the rest of their lives. Is mountains and valleys and mountains and valleys. And while you're living on, the va living on the mountain, you may be prone not to run to Jesus. Lord God, please pour your spirit out. And our problem is, is that we're not desperate enough for God. We're not desperate enough for a breakthrough. We're not desperate enough for God to send revival on his church again. When we're happy with, with mercy drops falling on us. Mercy drop here. Mercy drop there. It's a good mercy drop. But God's saying, listen, y'all know I'm frustrated. Y'all know God is frustrated with the church because we're not asking enough from God. We're not believing enough from God. We're not pouring out our hearts that, God, I want you more than I even breathe right now. Are y'all hearing me tonight? You've got to be desperate for God. Who says amen tonight? You've got to want God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The man runs to God. And I want to tell you tonight that every day you need to run to God. You ought to be running to him. It's not because God moved. It's because we moved. Come on, say amen. <laughs> We move. So the Bible says, I'm almost done. The Bible says that this man, he, they, they begin running to him. They run to him. And James chapter 4, verse 7 says, I could end this series. I come down to the end of this series saying this. James 4, 7. Would y'all read this with me tonight? On the screen, read it with me tonight. Come on, one, two, three. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Look what the text says, it says, submit yourself to God. So what I'm saying is every day you need to submit yourself to God. What does that mean? Every day, God, here I am. God, I, I lay down my agenda. God, not me, but you. God, order my steps. God, give me power. God, give me grace. Every day you ought to submit yourselves to God. And it says, then to God, then resist the devil, which means this. Leave the devil's stuff alone. Thank you tonight for that one clap. Amen. Do I got about two, got, got, got about two, three more claps tonight with that tonight? Can I say that? I said, leave the devil's stuff alone. Because the more, y'all ain't going to say amen and save y'all life. The more you play with the devil's stuff, the more the devil thinks you belong to him. Oh, they, they like it. They like it. So they must be on my team. You got to leave the devil stuff alone. And I'm trying to tell y'all, if you're gonna be, if we are going to be sanctified, you cannot keep watching foolishness on Netflix and on television and think that you're gonna be sanctified. By beholding, we become changed. And if you keep on hanging around devilish folk, I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to preach this thing. I'm about to preach. I'm gonna show you something to take you. You may not have seen it before. If you keep on hanging around that thing, whether the person's negative, whether they are a gossip, oh, I came down your pew. You couldn't say amen, so say ouch. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you already say, Pastor, I don't got none of them problems, but you're a gossip. And notice I close my eyes as I said amen. Close your eyes as well. 
Is he talking to me? You bet I am. Yeah. You are gossip. So whatever you hang around and behold, that's what you become. Can I prove it before I let y'all go tonight? Can I prove it? Can I, can I get about five more minutes, y'all? Can, can I get five? Six? Okay, I'm just getting here. Here it is. Here it is. Verse 7. I'm going to show you. I'm out your way. And he cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? Don't, don't miss this. Son of the most high God. The, 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 this, this, this is the devil, the demons, this is a demon possessed man now talking to Jesus. And he says, Jesus, I know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. He says, I assure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now, here's what y'all miss. Y'all miss this. Y'all read that right there. The devils just told Jesus, he said, listen now, torment me not. Okay, y'all, y'all. The demons have been tormenting this man for a long time. That's how you know the devil is a hypocrite. Because the devils, and by the way, if you, if you act like this, you're a hypocrite as well. Come on, somebody, and got a little devil in you as well. The devils have been pipping this man now for a long time with all these demons. But the moment Jesus shows up, they say, Jesus, don't, don't mess us up. Hold up. You've been messing this man up. So how are you? That's a hypocrite. Amen. Come on, say hypocrite. For he said unto him, the demon says, come out of the man. Look what Jesus says. Again, he says, come out of the man. There's something about speaking the word of God. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? What is thy name? And he answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, why in the world would Jesus, in closing, why would he ask the man his name? Did Jesus not know his name already? But the brother says, my name is Legion. Question, church folk, who's talking right now? Is it the man or is it the demons? Yeah, it's the demons talking right now, but he's talking through the man. And now the man signifies what the devil has told him his name is. You missed what I just said. C come, come here. The man opens up his mouth through the demons and declares what the devil told him his name is. Collins, his mother never named him Legion. But because he's believed the lie of the enemy and starts speaking that thing, he now declares my name is Legion. And in Bible times, whatever name you have is your destiny. So Jesus is trying to get him to state his name, not just because he wants to know who he is, but he wants to know who you really belong to. Hey, y'all know this to be true tonight. I'm trying to land this plane, but y'all know this to be true tonight that if you hang out long enough with a certain crowd, they'll start identifying you by your habit. And even, how many, how many of y'all know, how many of y'all got, how, how many y'all got a, a drunk uncle in y'all family? I'm going, I'm sorry, I want y'all raise your hand. You, you got, you got, you got some, you got some people in your family and you don't call them by their name. I don't got no help in this place tonight. I know I'm preaching tonight. Y'all, y'all won't say amen. Y'all say, well, that's, that's, that's uncle somebody. That's, that's the drunk over there. You don't call him by his name because you have, he's identified so long with his habit. So that's the drunk, that's the liar, that's the crook. That's the church gossip, are y'all hearing me tonight? That's the such and such, that's the such and such, but you don't, we don't call you by your name because you have been possessed by your habit. I'm done. Here it is. So Jesus says, what's your name? Because he wants to change his name. I, I, I shouted all by myself right there. I'm sorry to get so excited. J Jesus wants to know his name 
Because he says that whenever you come to me, you never leave the same way you came. Is there anybody that can testify that he makes you better when you come to him? When you run after him, he makes you better. He can change you from a drunk to being a deacon. Come on, somebody. He can change a Saul to a Paul. Do I have a witness, somebody? He can change a trickster into Israel. Do I have a witness, somebody? He can change you because your name does not have to be permanent. And when we get to heaven, the Bible says he's going to give us a new name. And he, the demons, besought him that he would not send them away out of the country. So our plan, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. The demons say, listen, Jesus, we like it here. We don't want to go. Please do not send us out of the country. We like First Church. <laughs> oh, I hope y'all getting this word tonight. We like Huntsville. With all these Adventists. Yep, Mecca. I hang out and I specialize around church folk. Don't send us away. We want to hang out still. We don't want to go. When I was in seminary, Pastor Miller, I had a professor in seminary that taught us in, in one of my classes dealing with world religions and spiritualism that it is always the tactic of the devil not to just freelance around, but the devil always wants to possess something or someone. And I need y'all to hear me tonight, y'all, that if you are not submitting yourselves to God every single day, you are an easy prey for the enemy. When you turn on the television and click online, you are an easy prey for the enemy if you are not submitted to God. When you're dating, y'all, you need to make sure that he or she knows Jesus. Come on, somebody. And is faithful to God. You can't keep on being in the valley, on the bank, in the valley, on the, in the river. No, you got to stand for God. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and against powers and against rulers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Guard your house. Guard your mind. Guard your soul. Young people, hear me tonight. Guard your soul. Guard your soul. Don't let anybody and everybody just come in and touch you. Get your hand off of me. Come on, somebody. I don't know where your hand's been. Come on, somebody. Get your Act like COVID. Six feet. Come on, so y'all ain't going to say amen. We don't want to go. We want to hang out. We don't want to go. We want to hang out. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. You ready for the end of this tonight? He says, no, 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 no. You got to get to stepping. He says, what's your name? My name is Legion, for we are many. Legion, 6,000 Roman soldiers at full strength. The brother is possessed with 6,000 soldiers at full strength. And when Jesus says, what's your name? He says, Legion. But Jesus says, hold up, I, I got something for you right now. And the Bible says, look, look at the text right now. Look at verse 15 now. He says, come out of the man. I, I, I dare you tonight. I dare you. I dare you tonight. I dare you as your pastor. I dare you to start opening up your mouth and start rebuking stuff around you. I dare you tonight, open up your mouth and say, get thee behind me, Satan. I dare you tonight, somebody, to start walking around and anoint your house while y'all hear me tonight. Do I got any believers tonight that's hearing the word of God tonight? I'm talking about anoint that pillow in Jesus' name. Anoint your doorpost in Jesus' name. Anoint yourself in Jesus' name. Walk around and get thee behind me, Satan. Now, I didn't tell y'all to call somebody saying, because that may cause a little bit more problems, but you can at least in your spirit say, I know who you are. I know who your daddy is. Get thee behind me. But sometimes open their mouth and say, get thee behind me. And when Jesus spoke that word, the Bible says, those demons, 6,000 of them. Can y'all imagine that? 6,000 in one man. Bible says they all, and I don't got time this night, but I would ask the question, how did they get there to begin with? Because the only way they could have gotten there is if he opened the door for them to come in. 
chosen at the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all, to say it loud tonight, but I'm going to hide this for my own good tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we got the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. Come out of the man. And all those demons came out at one time. It didn't take Jesus several times to get him out. One word got them out. They got inside of another unclean thing called a pig. They, they, they got inside of another thing called a pig. And I don't got time tonight, but I'll, I'll prove to you, not this sermon this week, but my sermon next week, if God gives me strength, I'm going to preach and talk about how God only had only God gives the devil permission. The devil can't touch you unless God gives him permission. If you read the other text, I'm trying to stop. If you read the other text, the other text say, they say, have you come already? Read, read, read Matthew's account. Have you come already to destroy us? How they talk already? They, they, the demons know the Bible. They was like, Jesus, you ain't died yet. He spoke a word. All of them went into the, the, the pigs, ran off the cliff. And now watch the text, verse 15. It's my, it's my last part, verse 15 and 9. Don't you love Jesus? I love my Jesus tonight. Verse 15, the Bible says, and they come to him. All the folk that didn't want him around to begin with, they tried to get rid of him. Because isn't that crazy, y'all? They had no problem with Jesus. While the demon-possessed man was roaming free. But the moment you get free, somebody got issues with that. Woo! I'm sorry, I, I, I said it again. They had no problem with Jesus while he was living low down. But the moment he got right, they got problems with Jesus. Because when Jesus comes in, he comes to rearrange everything in your life. And they come to him and they see him that was possessed. I said was. With the devil and had the legion. And when they come to him, what do they see here tonight? Y'all y'all already know that. They see him with everybody. They see him what? Now, come on, y'all. Y'all, I know I kept y'all 8 o'clock. I know it's time to go, y'all, but I got one last minute. He, he was clothed. Now, some of y'all don't know how to shout. So can I teach y'all for a second, somebody? Can I teach you how to shout? Here, here it is tonight. The, the, here, here's your shout. Y'all think this is a song. He was clothed and in his right mind. That ain't a song. No, the brother has on clothes right now. And the question I got for the text and the question I have for y'all tonight is he was naked to start off with. He was out of his mind to start off with. But now when he meets Jesus and ran to him, fell down to him, worshipped him, got the demons extracted out of him, now he got some clothes on. Where did the clothes come from? I'll tell you where they come from that when you meet Jesus he'll clothe you in his righteousness he'll clothe you in his white robe he'll clothe you with goodness and mercy he'll put his righteousness on you so you start looking better than you ever looked before anybody know you look good when you have Jesus in your life that's how you shout you shout when you see how God has made a way he has clothes on. He's in his right mind. And while he's in his right mind sitting there, they were all afraid. Like, how does brother that was just towed up from the flow up, how is he now sitting there calm, cool, collected with a blue jacket on? Come on, somebody. How is he looking like that? Y'all know how he's looking like that tonight? Can I get one last holler tonight, y'all? 
he's looking like that because he met Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. I know y'all get mad. I'm, I'm over time right now. Uh, when your anger, when you meet Jesus, he'll turn that around. Your bitterness, he'll turn it around. Yo, yo, I can't stand the church. He'll turn all of that around when you meet Jesus. But the evidence of you not knowing Jesus is you because you can't stand the church. Say it again. The evidence of you not knowing Jesus is because you can't stand the church. I can't stand the church because you don't know Jesus. Because Jesus says the church is the apple of mine eye. And if you love Jesus, you will love his people. Verse 16, he's clothed in his right mind. And the Bible says, and they saw it, they told how it befell, how he was possessed with the devils, also concerning the swine. Now, 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 the other folk are testifying about what Jesus Christ did. The haters are testifying. And in verse 17, they began to pray him to depart out of their cults. Jesus, please go, Jesus, go, go, go. But verse 18 and 19, the last verse says this, and when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devils, he prayed that I want to be with you, Jesus. Now, if you can't say amen off of this, you don't have an amen in your spirit. He was out of his mind, but he says, Jesus, can I go with you? He's like a little kid now. Jesus, this ain't the demon speaking no more. This is the man. Jesus, can I go with you? Because whenever God's been good to you, your proper response is whatever you say, I'll do. Or can I preach my theme for this year from membership to discipleship? I was a member out of my mind, but I met Jesus and now I'm a disciple. He said, can I, in other words, he said, can I be your disciple? Now what I don't have time for is to tell you that three requests was made in this story. Three requests was made. Three requests were made. Three. Count them. Three. And Jesus granted two of them to demons but told the man no. I'm telling you, but glad y'all got, got a pastor that studies the word of God. Two requests were made. Both of them were no. Both of them were Yes. Can I leave? Can we? He, he sent them all to the swine. Don't torment me, okay? But the man says, can I go with you? And Jesus tells the man, no, you can't go with me because I got something better for you to do. When you meet Jesus, I need for you to go out. Look at the text now. Go out. Look at verse 19. He says, I need for you to go out into Decapolis. Go home. Verse says, go home. Go home. Go home. Tell your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and how he has had compassion on thee. Listen, y'all. Stop being a silent witness. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody that he loves you. Tell somebody that he'll pick you up, turn you around, and plant your feet on solid ground. Tell somebody about Jesus. We're too silent, too quiet. Tell somebody that Jesus is at first church and he makes a difference in your life. Tell them that he's had compassion on me. I don't care how long I keep you off for the next minute right now. He's been too good. How many of y'all know he's been too good? Grace after grace after grace. Mercy after mercy after mercy. And you sitting there tonight like you deserve it. The only thing you deserve is hell. I need somebody to help me right here. But if it had not been 
for the grace of God. If it had not been for the mercy of God, thank God for your mercy. He had mercy on you and compassion. And then he says, now, brother, because I've done all that for you, he says, now, no, you can't go with me. He says, go home, do all that. And he said, now, go to the capitalist. Verse 20, last verse. Go to the capitalist. The capitalist, D-cap, is a city, 10 cities. In other words, Jesus just ordained a brother to be an evangelist. He didn't go to seminary, but he's an evangelist. Come on, somebody. Because he got anointing from Jesus. Go out to 10 cities and tell these 10 cities how great things Jesus has done for him. And all men did marvel. And y'all know the rest of the story? He went out and started testifying. Can I tell you how he did? I met a man called Jesus. Some of y'all, am I the man? Y'all know who I was. I was the man that was out of my mind. It's you. You show sure enough me. What happened? I saw Jesus. What did he do? He touched my life. He spoke to my situations. And now I'm better than I've ever been before. I want to meet him as well. And now everybody in there, all lot of folk in these 10 cities got saved and will be in heaven because a brother met Jesus because he makes all the difference in your life you believe God tonight come on come on to y'all tonight there's a song that simply says redeemed how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. It's spring break, so I took eight minutes extra. Amen. I took eight extra for spring break. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on down. Come on down to the altar. Redeemed, 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 redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Listen, while you're coming tonight, you got something on your heart tonight. You got something that you need God to do. Are you here tonight? You got something you need God to do tonight? You got a prayer that you're praying about tonight? Come on, press all the way in. Press all the way in. Come on, you, you got something that you're saying, God, I need help. I need you to move. Before you start seeing the, the reasons, to keep on playing, the reason I tell y'all to come down and all that is because when you start walking, God starts working. You know what I say? I say, when you start walking, God starts working. When you take the first step, God says, I'm already going to take the next step. Just telling God, God, I want what you have. And when you tell God, I need you, God, I need you, I need you, God. He says, All right, I know. I'm glad you asked. Now let me now grant what you need. Here we go. Together. From the beginning, oh, how I love, redeem, how I love to proclaim, redeem, I love, 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 redeem, child and forever I am, oh, redeem. His child and forever. 
Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we end with this song tonight because we have victory in Jesus. God, when we leave this place tonight, we want to know that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, thank you tonight for Jesus. Thank you, oh God, tonight that man's extremity is God's opportunity. God, whatever seems to be too hard, God, it's never too hard for you. Lord, this man, nobody could do anything with him. And God, some of us have, have problems and have burdens that can't nobody else do anything about. No, no man, no doctor, no medicine. Lord, all those things are wonderful, but God, tonight we need Jesus. So God, we ask you, God, tonight, Lord, please come into our hearts again. Lord, please abide in our minds again. Lord, please, God, remove every hindrance, every sin. God, everything, God, that's not like you, Father. Lord, we turn it over, God, to you right now. Everything that will prevent us from going closer to you, God. Lord, we ask that you, oh God, will please remove it right now. The same way that you removed the demons from this demoniac or from this man. Lord, please remove the issues, God that we might be with you and that we might tell somebody else about how good and how wonderful you are. Lord, thank you for always making a way for us. Lord, tonight we come into the sanctuary. Those who are online tonight, God, Lord, we have a lot of things on our hearts tonight. Lord, if I were to pass the mic around, God, tonight, there will be hundreds of individuals that will, will testify, God, that they need a breakthrough. They need a blessing. Lord, they, they need another touch, God, by you. So, Lord, tonight my prayer is not only will you redeem us, God, but would you please pass us not, oh, gentle Savior. But, Lord, please hear our humble cry. While others thou art calling, Lord, whatever you do, God, please don't pass us by. If we need healing, God, heal us. If we need deliverance, God, deliver us. God, if we need revival, God, revive us. If we don't know, God, what to pray for, Lord, intercede on our behalf. But God, whatever you do, Father, may you get the glory out of our lives. God, we believe tonight that you have been in this place. God, we believe that you have spoken to us, God, through the frailty of a mere man. And Lord, tonight we humble ourselves before your throne. And God, like little children, we beseech thee, O oh God. God, we beseech thee for a closer walk with thee. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to live righteous. Teach us to let go of every hindrance that so easily besets us. Teach us, God, not to become possessed with the things of this world. But may our focus always be on Jesus. We thank you tonight for your word. Carry us safely, God, from this place. Bring us back, God, the next appointed hour. And Lord, help us to have a desire, even more so, to hear you again. But God, between now and then, in our own quiet time, in our personal devotion time, in our walks with you, God, speak to us and remind us that you're fighting our battles. Thank you for victory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you tonight. As you leave tonight, the deacons are at the door to collect a free will offering. You are more than welcome to give tithe and offering. But as you leave tonight, worship. As you leave worship tonight, giving is a part of worship. Are you hearing me tonight? As you leave tonight, giving is a part of worship. Let me teach y'all tonight. For those online, 
I know we don't have the ways to give, but you can connect with that QR code online. Connect with us. Make sure you are faithful to God. Amen. Faithful to God and you're returning to God. And he's going to be faithful to you. Amen. All right, so this Wednesday, I'm not sorry, this is Wednesday, this coming Sabbath, we look forward to seeing y'all this coming Sabbath. Uh, hey, y'all, it's our Be The Sermon Sabbath, y'all. It's our Be The Sermon Sabbath. And no but two amens, amen. Be The Sermon Sabbath, third Sabbath of the month. We invite you all to go out. There's an email that got sent out. We're going, of course, to Willow Run. We're packing goods for the homeless. And we're writing cards to those who are incarcerated. So make sure that you are doing that. All right. Amen. Let me pray for you one more last time. I know I prayed already. Father, bless us as we go home. Keep us safe. May no hurt, harm, or danger come our way. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. Hey, y'all, share this word, share the word, share the word online. Share it with somebody that they can be strengthened in their faith. God bless you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you on our next broadcast. God bless you.